Thanks for joining us today, guys. My name is Ben from Tech Support, and today we're doing a tech tip video. Today's tech tip is going to be basic setup for MCA series control amps. That's MCA 66 and MCA 88. Whether you've been in the business for years or if this is your first MCA you're working on, this video today serves as a basic how-to setup of MCA series control amps. Let's begin. Our first steps are making our basic connections. This includes connecting the MCA to the network, connecting our speakers to the amp, connecting audio sources, and keypads if being used. First, we will connect our MCA to the network through the Ethernet port. Next, we will connect our speakers to the powered output for Zone 1 using the provided Phoenix connectors. You will likely be using most of the powered outputs here, so make sure to connect the rest of your speakers as needed. MCA 66 features preamp outputs for Zone 1 and 2. The MCA 88 features preamp outputs for all eight zones. Zone 7 and Zone 8 specifically are preamp out only, so for this you will need external amplifiers. We will also connect our keypad to Zone 1's keypad port. This part is only necessary if you are using hardwired keypads such as the MDK-C6 or the SLK-1. If you are using app control or XTS touchscreen keypads, you will not be making use of these specific keypad ports. Keypad 1 for Zone 1. Next up, we are going to connect our sources of audio to the MCA. In this example, I'm only going to use one source, but you have six inputs available for the MCA-66 and eight inputs available for use on the MCA-88. Both products also feature not only analog inputs, but also have a few coaxial inputs. Audio source connection for source number one. Now we have all our basic connections made. The MCA series control amps also feature additional connections for RNET link, IR output, 12 volt trigger, USB input for firmware, and a Bluetooth port. Bluetooth ready module connection input. We will address advanced connections for these MCA products in a follow-up video. It's time to power up the MCA and move on to the next step in our setup, initial programming. The MCA will demonstrate a solid red power LED during the initial boot phase. Shortly after we see the zone LEDs lighting up in sequence. This process can take around a minute or two to complete. The zone LEDs will complete the sequence, and we should see only the power LED lit up now. Once the MCA has finished booting up, our power LED will also demonstrate status to us. For the MCA 66 and MCA 88, a solid red power LED will indicate the product is powered on and has network communication. The MCA 88X will indicate the same status, but with a solid green LED. If you see a blinking amber LED, this tells us the MCA is not receiving any network communication, and you will want to verify the network connection is intact and stable.
Now that our MCA is ready to rock and roll, we will need to access the product setup page. The MCA series is fully configurable through a web browser. For this, we will need a web browser capable device, such as a smartphone, a tablet, or a laptop. We will also need to identify the MCA's IP address. Here are a few ways you can do this. If you have an MDK C6 keypad attached to the system, you will receive a message that will indicate the product's IP address upon power on. You can also use a network scanning tool. One that we like to recommend is the mobile app called Thing. Lastly, you can also use the Myra Sound app. Launch the app. It will auto discover and connect to the product. You will then be able to enter the admin settings page by pressing and holding on the settings icon on the top right of the display for a few seconds. Tap the selection for MCA settings and it will launch your mobile browser to the target MCA's IP address page. Web config is a powerful and convenient feature of our products and allows easy on the fly configuration of all our current generation products. Our first step is to unlock the product. Select the option to unlock and provide your RCI username and password to unlock the system. When valid credentials are entered, the product will remain fully unlocked unless a factor reset is performed down the road. Make sure to check for available firmware updates under the Admin Firmware Update menu. If there are any specific network settings you wish to adjust, this can be done through the Admin Networking menu. Now that we have our initial setup complete, we can label our zones and sources. Under the Setup tab, you will see an area for Zone Settings and Source Settings. We will now go to the Setup Source Settings page. On this page, just like the zones, we can label our sources. Depending on the MCA controller you're working with, you may have some sources pre-labeled, such as source number one being preset to work with our Bluetooth module. We can disable any source inputs we are not using. We also may need to edit fine details on certain sources. This is very important if we are using a Russound specific source of audio, such as the MBX PRE streamer, ST1 AM FM tuner, and our BTC 1X Bluetooth module. We can now label our zones. You can disable zones if you are not making use of them for your installation, and you can also edit fine details of each zone, such as the volume trim and source availability per zone. For basic setup though, naming our rooms is sufficient. That's it! We now have an MCA setup for use with a few sources of audio and a few zones. We can test and control the system through our keypad or app now. It is important to test the system to make sure we have it configured exactly the way we want to use it for the installation site. Programming changes can be made on the fly through the browser at any time. Thank you for watching this video on a basic setup of a MCA control amp. We will see you next time.